Do you know why the retiree decided not to buy a boat with his inheritance? He didn't want to watch his money sail away. I recently sat with a with a, a woman who was well into her retirement and she had kind of a surprise, which was she got an inheritance at that point. It was from a distant relative. So her parents had, had long since passed and frankly, she hadn't been doing that well up till up till this age. She had some pensions, but it was really hard to make the month. So this this was very welcome income for her. But I, I want to talk to you about the conversation that we had because I think a lot of people, when they do inherit money, whether it's a surprise or whether it's expected, they don't always know what to do with it. And I think it's really important that we dive into this a little more in depth. Of course, if you have any questions, you can always get in touch with me at the contact button of goldsteinongelt.com. I'm Doug Goldstein. I've been the host of Goldstein on Gelt for probably over 15 years. I hope you've been enjoying it. Please be sure to tell your friends and be sure to leave a five-star review if it's a show that you like. And if it's a show that you don't like, then I don't know why you're here. In any case, let's dive right into this story of receiving an inheritance when you're already in your retirement years. So this is what happened. The inheritance had a whole bunch of different parts, but overall, the, the biggest account was this account that was filled with stocks. It was lots of different companies, and over the years, it had done very well. In fact, if you looked at the performance, there were a few big companies that had really done well, and they had pushed up the value of the portfolio a lot. And quite frankly, the, the reason that this woman got such a, a, a glorious inheritance was because the, the, the person who, who left it for her had invested in the stock market. Now, as an aside, that person had also been very, very financially successful. He had had real estate holdings and, and business holdings, but also a lot of stocks. So an interesting thing to hear about that is when I describe the person who bequeathed the money to her, you'll see it's a very different kind of person, a person in a very different financial situation than she was. Now, it's true that it did very well in the past, but the real thing we need to look at is what are the needs of the client now? There's a lot of ways of looking at your investments, and one way to look at it is how it performed, but another way to look at the portfolio is what do you need? And the fact is, Good investors will look at both of these things in making a decision about what to do. I pointed out to the client that now we're, we're in a situation of new priorities. Originally, and frankly, I didn't know the person who left the money to, to her. I just I only heard the stories. But originally, his goal clearly was to maximize capital growth. That's why it was so aggressively invested in the stock market. And my guess is that the, the, the personally, he was able to handle the added risk to the portfolio. When we talk about someone's risk tolerance, it, it can be measured in many, many different ways. But one of the simplest ways to measure it is if you say, listen, if I have a million dollars in the stock market and we have another crash like we did in 2008 and it loses $500,000, if I lose half a million dollars on that portfolio, what am I going to do? A lot of people were in that situation in 2008. They sold out their portfolio. Maybe they did not have the tolerance for risk to be in that kind of portfolio. Now, there's no judgment. Different people are just different and have different needs and personalities, and they can stomach a different kind of pain sometimes. But the fact is, if, uh, if it's not appropriate for you to have that level of risk, don't have that kind of risk. So now the situation is different. Now that my client had inherited this money, she's really got to focus on capital preservation because it's true before she didn't have it, but now she does have it. That's the reality. So you could say, well, if she loses it, it's like she never had it before. And I've heard people say that. They go, well, Doug, if it doesn't work out, so, you know, it was lucky that I had it for a while and, and I'll let it go. But I, I don't really think that's a very good model. The fact is, every day there's a reality that you live in. And if today's reality is that you receive a large inheritance, make it fit for your personality and your needs. So Capital preservation was certainly important. Another thing that was very important was a steady stream of income. As I mentioned in the beginning, she did not have a lot of income from her pensions for a number of reasons. And, and now was an opportunity to convert this portfolio into an income-producing portfolio. And that's what she needed to do. And lowering the risk was a critical element of this because, although it's true you could buy stocks and then take some money out of the stock market every month to, to supplement your income, or you could take the dividends that the stocks, that the stocks spin off, all these are ideas that people like to talk about. But at the end of the day, if this portfolio gets cut in half because there's some calamity in the market, and anyone who's old enough to be listening to this show can certainly remember things recently like 
pandemics, like wars, like crashes of the market, they do happen. She has this great opportunity now to set up a portfolio that makes sense for her, and that's what we really need to do. Okay, so ultimately, the new, the new strategy is to rebalance the portfolio. Now, we may not take 100% of the money out of the stock market because she has an emotional tie to it. What's the emotional tie? She says, listen, this guy made a lot of money trading stocks. He did very, I, I don't just want to throw it away. So I hear that. There are emotions involved in investing. As a financial advisor, my job is to guide people in the right direction, but also to respect their, their, their feelings. So one of the ways of doing that in rebalancing the portfolio is just saying, okay, listen, let's hold on to a couple of positions that maybe you feel good about or important, but you don't need to keep 50 different stock positions in the portfolio. And I think that that speaks to people. They understand, listen, at the end of the day, the stocks don't owe you anything. You might have one day made a lot of money investing in a company like Bear Stearns or Lehman Brothers or Blockbuster Video. And for a while, you might have done very well. But then they went out of business and you would have lost all your money. So you, the fact that something had a good period doesn't mean it's always going to do well. So we need to stabilize it. We need to use fixed income. We spoke about bonds and mostly we spoke about bank deposits because we need to protect the, the portfolio, reduce volatility and reduce risk. And that was really the main idea here. Okay, the key benefits to her are capital protection because if the money disappears, she's out of luck. The, the second thing is generating income. The third thing is risk reduction. And the fourth thing, and what I think is most important, is lowering the stress. So many people are so stressed out about money. In fact, this, this woman told me that her husband used to handle all of the finances because she said, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the stress. She was very smart. In fact, uh, in her business, when she, when, before she retired, she was working in the field of numbers and money. But for her own money, she just couldn't stand it. She couldn't stand the stress. So it's important when you're handling it for yourself, especially if you're a widow or you're divorced or you're the, the person in your marriage who's really the one handling the money, you need to make sure that you're not stressed out about it because when you are stressed out, you will absolutely make worse decisions. Moving forward, I said, listen, everything we're doing is dynamic. What does that mean? It means we're going to make some decisions now. But if you decide things change in your life, in the markets, you get more money, you have, to, you have a big expense, everything is, is changeable. And you need to work with a partner, an advisor. Uh, um, I really am a big believer in advisors for people who are not sophisticated investors. If you're a sophisticated investor, first of all, thank you so much for listening this far into today's show. But if, you are, if you're not a sophisticated investor, make sure you find someone that listens to you, that you feel comfortable with, that you can talk to and ask all your questions. Not someone who says, just give me all the money and I'll invest it for you. No, no. You want to work with someone who spends the time to understand your situation. And then, like I'm describing with this woman, builds a portfolio that makes sense based on two things, what your needs are and what your tolerance for risk is. That's really setting up the, ta the, the tailored plan. And then... Hopefully there'll be some growth, right? But every person is going to have a different level of growth or possibly loss, depending on the style of the portfolio. How aggressive is it? How much money is put into the stock market or the opposite? Maybe you're putting your money into bank deposits, collecting the interest, taking some of the interest out, but also reinvesting some of it. And that helps to grow the portfolio. I, I, I think that the bottom line here is that when you set up a portfolio for yourself, you need to double check and triple check and regularly check that the portfolio is making sense for who you are. And I, I hope that uh, the today's show explained that to you and that, that uh, you'll be able to explain it to other people. If you can't explain it yourself, please be sure to send them to goldsteinongelt.com and say, hey, I was listening to Doug Goldstein's podcast and it, it spoke a lot about inheritances. And if you're dealing with an inheritance, you can always feel free to get in touch with me at goldsteinongelt.com at the Contact Us page. Thank you so much to Steve Stewart, my chief engineer, to Yosef Goldstein my producer, to Batsheva Goldstein, the website designer. And most important, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I'm Doug Goldstein, your host at the Goldstein on Geld Show. You've been listening to the financial podcast for people living in Israel.